I'm Laura McCabe and I'm here to teach you today about how to make a beaded toggle. Okay, so I love toggle closures and if you've done anything with me, you already know that. But I use them in a lot of my necklaces a lot of my bracelets. They're a really nice closure to use. Um, they're secure. I've had good luck with them in that regard. But also, they sort of create this continuity to the piece. They allow you to bring in the beads you've used in other parts of the necklace or the bracelet. And it kind of makes for a nice flow as opposed to using like a fabricated metal closure on it. So I'm going to teach you today how to do this. I have created a PDF which is in the show notes down there that you can print out. And those are step-by-step -step written instructions illustrated as well on how to make a toggle closure like we're going to be doing today. Um, but I also wanted to make you a little video because there's a lot of little nuances and technique that aren't going to come across in written instructions. So let's go. Okay, before we get going, let's just take a minute to talk about what kind of materials you're going to need to, to build this toggle closure. Um, you're going to need cylinder beads, size 11 Japanese cylinder beads. I have two colors laid out because I actually kind of like doing my ring in one color and my bar in a different color. So, um, but if, you, if you're doing, doing them the same, you only need one color. But I have my two colors here. Um, you will also need 15 round Japanese seed beads. And again, I like having a couple different colors because I like incorporating different colors into it, but really you'd only need one um, if you were going to stick with the same color throughout. You'll also need some 15 check charlottes. Those are those little guys. They're um, super teeny tiny, um, but they do add a nice little detail. We're going to be using them to embellish um, the tabs that are used, the connector tabs. And then also you're going to need some 11 round Japanese seed beads. Those are used on the ring. And finally, you're gonna need, I, in this case, I used four millimeter Swarovski pearls. You can really use any bead in this kind of uh, size range. You can use rondelles, you can use rounds, you can use freshwater pearls. Um, whatever you choose though, you wanna make sure it has a decent sized hole in it because you will need to make six passes through that hole uh, when you're using it at the ends. You're gonna be attaching it to the ends of the toggle bar. So that's what you're gonna have to have ready in order to go ahead and make this. Okay, so let's start with the toggle ring part of the closure. What we're going to do is we're going to start off by stringing up our 15 round Japanese seed beads. So to do this, um, we you can use any number really you like, but for, for the way I like to do them, uh, 36 is the magic number. So I'm going to go ahead and string up 36 of these, and then I will come back and show you what we do next. Okay, so here we have our 36. 15 rounds. What I'm going to do is I'm going to circle around and I'm going to go through just a couple of beads again to make a circle here. Um, I don't recommend tying a knot when you do this actually. I, I prefer just to circle through a couple of beads. Um, I find if you tie a knot what happens is everything gets a little bit too tight and it gets uh, kind of crunched up. It doesn't, doesn't end up being a ring. So we're just going to pass through a couple of beads there. Leave yourself oh, about like 8 or 10 inches of tail, something like that, because you'll be using that later on. And you are just going to start peyote stitching with the 15 rounds. So I'm going to pick up a bead, skip the next bead, and go through the bead after that. And when you start off, you want to leave like a little bit of, a little bit of thread showing, like two to three beads of thread maybe, um, kind of about that much that you can see there that I have. Um, it's going to be kind of uh, sucked up as you peyote stitch. It, it will get pulled in. You're not going to have a gap there eventually. But really, one of the things I can tell you about rings sort of the big mistake that people make is they work too tight. And if you work too tight, it seems sort of counterintuitive because you would think with a ring that you would not want to, um, that you know, you wouldn't want it to be loose. You'd want it to be tight. Actually, if you work too tight, you're going to find it does not make a ring. It makes a crunched up triangle. Um, so in hopes of avoiding that, we're going to work loosely. Um, you can see I still have a little bit of thread in there showing, but it'll slowly get kind of uh, sucked into the peyote stitch as I keep going. So I'm going to keep stitching until I finish this entire round and I'm going to come back right before the step up so I can show you that part. 
Okay, so at this point I've pretty much finished the round. I still have one more bead to put in and I need to do my step up. Um, but you can see that thread that was showing earlier um, has been kind of sucked into the peyote stitch. So there's no thread or any gaps in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I've picked up my, my bead already. So I have my, my bead on my thread. I'm gonna skip, I'm gonna go through a bead and I'm gonna go to the outside edge there. You can see where my needle's coming out on the outside edge. And at this point, you will see, if I move this around a little bit, you can see it's still very soft. Like I said, you wanna avoid doing anything uh, to make it too tight, because if it is too tight, uh, like I said, you're gonna have trouble getting that, that ring shape to, um, to form. So at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch over to the cylinder beads, the Japanese cylinder beads. They're a little bit larger, and they're gonna kind of cause the, the peyote stitch to to flare out rather than go up and down in like a cylindrical shape. It's gonna flare out a little bit. So it's just regular peyote here. So I'm just gonna be adding these cylinders along this outside edge. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a total of three rows of these. So it's gonna be three rows of cylinders. I'm just, I'm pulling as I add them, but you don't wanna, again, you don't wanna pull too, too tight because if you do, you are gonna, again, find that you're gonna run into trouble, um, particularly when you get to the point that you're gonna be zipping the outside edge. It's just not gonna zip up very nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my three rows here of cylinder beads. And when those are all done, I'll be back to show you what is coming up next. Okay, there we go. I have all three rounds of cylinders and you can see it kind of, it flares out like that. And now what we wanna do is we wanna weave through the beads. So we were coming out one of those 15s on the other side there. So I'm gonna just come diagonally through the beads. Sometimes you gotta do it in a couple passes. There we go. So diagonally through the beads. Get our little bit of wax out of there. Some wax on the thread. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, again, we're gonna stitch with cylinder beads, but this time I'm gonna do just two rows on this side. And I kinda wanna, I wanna push it over as I do it. So let me see if I can show you that. So I'm gonna be peyote stitching here, just like before, but you know, gently encourage with your nails, with your fingers, these beads to kind of push over because what's going to happen is they're going to come over and then you're going to zip the rows of cylinders along the outside edge to get the ring. But again, you know, we talked about it earlier. I'm going to talk about it again. See how soft this is at this point? That's what you want. Um, if, if it starts getting too stiff, even at this point, you're going to find that you're going to have problems when you go to zip it up. So I'm just going to work. And as I work gently, you can see here, just using my thumb to kind of push those beads and encourage them into place as I go. So there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and do my two rows and I will come back to talk to you about zipping it all up. Okay, I'm gonna jump in here really quick actually. Only one row is done at this point, but I did want you to see how I've encouraged those beads to kind of fold over like that, even with that first row before I go on to the second one. And this is really how you're gonna get that ring to take its ring shape. So you wanna make sure that you encourage them to do that even after just one row. So off to do the second one. Okay, at this point now I have those two rows of cylinder beads. So those are all done. And you can see, again, I've sort of encouraged them to kind of fold over there so that that zipping is gonna be a little bit easier now that we're up to that point. Um, but what I'm gonna do before I zip it, I'm gonna show you this. This is a great little trick. I'm gonna take the tail thread here and I'm gonna actually just wind it off, kind of treat your structure here like a bobbin. We're gonna just wind that tail thread off. And so what that's gonna do is, first of all, it will get rid of your tail thread. You don't have to weave it in later, but it also will sort of provide a little additional support to the ring structure. So um, it kind of, kind of does two things at the same time. But I'm just gonna wind it all the way off before I go to zip everything up. And then you don't have to, like I said, you don't have to deal with, with half hitching that or getting rid of it. It'll just stay in there out of your way. So now that that's wound off, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna zip these, these cylinder beads on either side together. So I'm gonna just back and forth like this. I'm gonna work my way all the way around until they're zipped 
all the way around the circle. And at this point, once you finish this, you're gonna find that you have that stiffness there in the structure. Um, but really up until this point, like I said, you wanna kind of think more about keeping it a little bit looser than a little bit too tight. Okay, so at this point, everything has been zipped. We're done with the zipping, and I've positioned my thread so it's coming out of a bead in that middle row of cylinder beads. If you see, there's five rows of cylinder beads, and that's the middle row. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an 11 round between every bead in that row, so it's like a stitch in the ditch. And these are just decorative. You know, it adds a little something to it. You you don't have to use um, you don't have to use the the 11 rounds. You could do Picos of Czech Charlottes, or um, you could do Japanese Charlottes if you wanted to. There's lots of different things that you could do for this. Um, but I'm going to do 11s. And I'm going to go ahead and do the, the whole round here except for the last stitch. And when I get to that last stitch, I'm going to come back and I'll, I'll show you how that's going to work. Okay, so I'm down to that last stitch. Like I said, we're gonna handle this a little bit differently. Rather than putting the 11 in there, I'm gonna come over here and pick up a cylinder bead, and I'm gonna put that cylinder bead in that last spot, and that is to set you up to build a strip. So we're gonna start building a strip of peyote. And what that strip is, it's gonna be like a little tab that we're gonna feed through the loop at the end of the necklace. And that's how we're gonna attach the clasp to the necklace or the bracelet, whatever you're using it on. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is, so I've added that one bead here. Now I'm coming out of a cylinder bead that's in the ring itself. I'm gonna pick up another cylinder bead and I'm just gonna go back through the one that I just added, right? just like that. There we go. And then I'm going to do another one. So we're just going to be start building this tab. It's two bead wide, even count peyote stitch. And we're going to build until we have a total of 20 rows. And the way that works is that's going to be 10 beads up each side. So that would be 20 rows altogether. So I'm just going back and forth here. And I'm going to keep a going until I get to that point. I'll come back once I have those 20 rows. Okay, so here we have 20 rows. If you were to count up this side, there'd be 10 beads. And up that side, there would be 10 beads as well. So that's our 20 rows. And now the last thing we're going to do before this is ready to attach to the necklace is we're going to embellish each side here with picos of Czech Charlottes. Because if I flip this on its side, you can see you can see the, the thread there right now that, um, that we've been using. So to kind of cover that up and just add a little little something something to it. I'm gonna pick up three Czech Charlottes and go down the next bead there. So it's just a little pico. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up the bead after that and then do another pico of Czech Charlottes. And I'll do these all the way down this one side here and then I'll weave across and I will go all the way up the other side doing the same thing until I get to the top side there and then we're going to actually just end up leaving the thread attached for now because we'll be using that later on when we uh, connect this to the necklace itself. So I'm going to go ahead and do these Chuck Charlottes and I will be back to show you when that's all been finished. Okay, so there we go. There's our picos with the, the check charlottes up both sides. Like I said, leave your, your thread attached because we'll need that later. And we're going to move on now to doing the toggle bar. Okay, so now we're ready to do the toggle bar part of the closure. And what I've done is if you have a look here, you can see I've switched out my cylinder beads to a different color. I kind of like doing that sometimes, sort of mixing it up and doing the ring in one color and then the bar in a different color. Um, it kind of gives you the opportunity to bring in more of the colors in your necklace as well or your bracelet if you're doing a bracelet. Um, but what I need to do to start here is I need to have 14 cylinder beads all threaded up here. So I'm going to slide these down and then you know, do double check. Always a good idea to make sure that your count is correct and it is correct. We got our 14. You want to leave a little bit of a tail, just enough to be able to weave it off. It doesn't have to be a lot of tail, um, but just enough to be able to weave it off. So I usually say like about five or six inches. And I do not have a stop bead on here. So you'll notice that I'm putting tension on the thread here um, because if I don't, <laughs> they'll, they'll fall off. So if you're not using a stop bead, just keep that in mind. 
and I'm gonna start peyote stitching. So I'm picking up a cylinder, I'm just gonna skip a bead, go through the bead after that. So it's just regular, it's regular peyote stitch, um, even count, you're just building a little tab, so nothing tricky here. And you just want to keep peyote stitching back and forth, you're going to keep working until you have a total of 12 rows, which would mean that there's six beads up each side. Um, that's going to give us a little tab that we're going to roll and form into a bar. So I'm going to go ahead and, and keep beading here. I'll come back once I have my 12 rows for the uh, peyote stitch. Okay, at this point I have my 12 rows, and if you have a look, uh, you can see there's six beads up this side, six beads up that side. You add those two together, that gives you 12 rows. And it's time to roll this into a tube, and we're going to zip it up to make a little, a little bar. It's going to be the toggle bar. So I'm just going to literally zigzag back and forth from side to side to zip this all together from one end to the other. These little tubes are great for um, for this kind of thing, for a toggle bar, but they're, it's a nice beaded bead or a spacer. You can use them for a lot of, a lot of different things. Um, but you just want to make sure as you do it that you pull. You want everything to stay tight. And you'll also notice if you look, my fingers right now are still pulling on that tail thread up there. The reason being is it's still, um, you know, it's not secured. So in order to keep all the beads tight, I want to keep pulling on that. And I just want to show you here when we get to the end, it's a little, a little trick I can show you. Um, when you zip up this way, what you're going to find is when you get to the last bead, when you're coming out the end here, through and then I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. These last two beads here, they're not connected. So if you look here, I can pull the tail. These two here are not connected. They're sort of separated here. So whenever I do this kind of a zip, what I do just to make sure everything's nice and tight is I'll go down that second bead there just to kind of pull everything together. There we go. And then I'll come up and we're good to go. Okay, so basically what we want to do here is we want to put little embellishments on either end, like that. And I'm using Swarovski pearls here. You can use um, all sorts of things. You could use a you could use a Swarovski pearl. You could use a rondelle. You could use a round bead. You could use a freshwater pearl. Um, it doesn't really matter. You just you will need to pass through it six times. So you just want to make sure you have a decent sized hole in whatever you're using. And you can see I'm coming out here, coming out the end there. And what I want to do is pick up, I'm going to pick up a 15 round. I'm going to pick up my little pearl here. And then three more 15s. So and I'm just using two different colors just to get a little bit of color in here. I'm going to slide those down. I'm going to go back through that pearl. So back through my pearl. Pick up another 15 here and go into the next cylinder bead in that toggle bar. And what's gonna happen is these little 15s, they kind of lift that pearl up and over the end and they'll help center it better over the end there. Um, and, and all of this back and forth will also sort of help reinforce um, this, uh, this bar and this attachment. So let me show you, we're now gonna come up through the next cylinder bead. So that would be the third one going around keep this tail out of the way. He's a little bit in the way right now. There we go. And now I'm going to pick up another 15. And I'm going to go up through my pearl and through my pico that's already there. Through all those three beads in the pico. Back down through my pearl. And we get there through the pearl. And I'm going to pick up yet another 15 round before going into the next cylinder in that, that toggle bar. So basically there's going to be one 15 sitting atop each cylinder around the end of the tube there. So there's going to be a total of six when we're all done. So again, I'm going to come back up through the next cylinder bead. I'm going to pick up my 15. I'm going to go through the pearl, through the pico, back down 
through the purl, pick up a 15, and then down into that last, that six cylinder bead at the end. So I'm gonna finish this up and I'm also gonna weave down to the other end and do the same thing at the other end because we want both ends to have this little, this little embellishment on the end. So if you go ahead and do that, I'll come back once that's all in place. Okay, so what I've done is I have embellished both ends here. They're both complete, and I actually did weave off the tail thread as well. I just half-hitched a couple times and buried that to get that out of the way. And I have now positioned my thread. So if the way I think of it is it's actually like 14 columns, because we had those 14 beads when we started our tab, so it's made 14 columns of peyote stitch. So what I've done is I've come out of a bead here, which I would consider the sixth column across. So I want my thread coming out there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up just one cylinder bead here, and I'm gonna go through the next bead in that row, which would be in the eighth column. So there we go, go through, and that'll sit nicely in there. It'll tuck right in there. There we go, and there's our little cylinder in there. Now we're gonna use this as a starting point to again, like we did with the ring, build that little strip of two bead wide. It's gonna be 20 rows of even count peyote stitch, which is going to be the little tab that will feed through, and and that's how we're going to attach this to the to the necklace or the bracelet, whatever we're going to be attaching it to. So I'm going to go ahead and continue until I have those 20 rows, and I will come back and we will talk about it a little okay, bit. Okay, there we have the 20 rows. So just like we did with the ring part of the closure, or, um, the toggle closure, we're gonna we're gonna do those picos of the 150 check charlottes all the way up and down this little tab here. So again, like I did before, you know, coming out of a bead, you're gonna pick up your three, and then you'll go down the next one. So we're gonna do that up this side and then down the other side, and then I'll be back to show you the final result. Okay, there we go. I have finished both sides of those Chuck Charlotte embellishments. So it matches the ring that we did earlier. So there we go. We got both of them there. Um, I also did leave the thread attached to the toggle bar there because we will need that when we're attaching it to the necklace. Um, and I think what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and just show you how that attachment is going to work when you're ready to actually connect it to the piece. Okay, so the best part, now we get to attach our clasp to our finished necklace. So I have the necklace here all ready to go and the, the ring and the toggle bar. And what I'm going to do is you can see when I made this necklace here, there's a loop of beads at the end and that's what the, the tab is going to feed through. Um, and that's how we're going to attach the closure here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and attach the toggle ring first, which is going to pass through that loop. And now what I need to do is I need to roll this around here and I'm going to zip this last row where my thread is to the very first row on the ring. So that's how we're going to attach it. So I'm just going to go through the bead that's at the base there. Now I'm going to go back into the, so it's just a zip, but it's a very small zip because it's only a two bead wide tab. There we go. And I'm not fully connected right here, not right yet. So what I'm going to do is then I'm going to change direction and go back into this cylinder that's in the ring and then that will kind of finish everything up there and it will hold everything nice and tight. So once I've done that I can go ahead and I'm going to just weave off this this thread. I'm going to half hitch a couple times probably in the ring here before I cut it and I'll come back and we'll talk about doing the toggle bar. Okay so it's going to be exactly the same thing at the other end here with the toggle bar. I'm going to feed through my loop like this and we're gonna roll it around and we're gonna again zip this last row to the first row to fully connect it. So then that, that will be woven off as well. You can weave off your thread. A lot of times I find it easier in this in, on this side to just weave off within the tab itself because the bar is quite stiff trying to get the needle in and out of there and tie half hitches is just too difficult really. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I will be back and everything will be all done. Okay, all done, there we go. Um, this makes just such a lovely closure. Um, I think you'll find it uh, quite a useful one. It allows you to incorporate all the uh, colors within your piece into the uh, closure mechanism itself. And I found uh, in my experience that they really do stay closed. They're a very secure closure as well as a very attractive one.
Thanks for joining me today for this tutorial on beaded toggles. Be well, stay safe, and bead on.